Good happy Wednesday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday evening, so let's begin. First up, we begin with breaking news. New Hampshire Governor, health officials, don't recommend canceling events because of COVID-19. Officials say no evidence yet of community transmission of coronavirus. New Hampshire officials are not recommending postponing or canceling public events as health workers ramp up testing for COVID-19. In a news conference Wednesday, health officials said five people in New Hampshire have tested positive for the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. Two were people who had an identified travel risk for contracting the virus, and the other three had direct contact with someone who had COVID-19. A person who works for a company in Bedford has tested positive for COVID-19, according to a memo sent to affected workers by the Furley White Management Company, which operates a group of offices. The company said the person is self-quarantining and was last at the office park on March 6th. It's not known if the patient is one of the five granite staters who tested positive for COVID-19 or if the person is from another state. Dr. Ben Chan, the state epidemiologist, said the state is working to rapidly increase its testing capabilities. 90 people have submitted samples for testing, and 74 tests have come back negative, with 11 still pending. Chan said there's no evidence of border community transmission of the virus in New Hampshire. We want people to feel empowered to make decisions to protect their own health, Chan said. We certainly do not want people to live in fear or panic or anxiety. So we want to provide accurate and up-to-date information on a routine basis and make sure that people feel free to go about their daily activities and attend school and other important activities and not be in fear of their health. Governor Chris Sununu said the state is not recommending that any public events be canceled or postponed at this time. Friday's Battle of Badges hockey game to benefit Children's Hospital at Dartmouth will go on as scheduled, but it will be played without spectators. Chan said most people with COVID-19 experience mild symptoms. Population at higher risk of severe symptoms include people older than 65 and people with medical conditions, including diabetes, heart disease, and chronic lung disease. He said people should monitor travel advisories from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Those who return to the state after traveling international should talk to their doctor to find out if they need to self-quarantine. Chan also advised discussing further travel plans with a doctor. The World Health Organization declared Wednesday that COVID-19 was a pan-epidemic with suit 
unexpected outbreaks in multiple regions of the world. The head of the agency said he is deeply concerned about the spread and sensitivity of the virus, as well as what he called alarming levels of in interaction. Tips for avoiding COVID-19 include frequent hand washing and staying home if you are feeling sick. The latest data in New Hampshire. Let's take a look. Number of positive COVID-19 tests, 5. CDC has confirmed 2 of them. Number of pending COVID-19 tests, 11. Number of negative COVID-19 tests, 74. Number of people tested since mid-January, 90. Number of people being monitored, 254. Approximately number. This will be updated. Friday's Battle of Badges hockey game to be played without spectators. Game will be streamed on WMUR.com and inside the WMUR mobile app. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Hitchcock has announced that it will, there has just announced that this Friday's Battle of the Badges benefiting Chad will be played without fans. Team Fire and Team Police will still face off on the ice at SNHU Arena, but the game will instead be streamed on the WMUR website and mobile app. Dartmouth Hitchcock says it made the decision due to concerns over coronavirus and having an, an expected crowd of 6,500 people at the arena. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Classes canceled at Epping schools after voters said he was quarantining. Town meeting day voter came in contact with someone with flu, officials say. Let's take a listen to that video from WR News 9. Hi, I'm Sherry Allen, proud owner of Mercedes-Benz of Portsmouth. We put every effort into making Mercedes-Benz... There are no classes at Epping's Middle and High School after a voter at town meeting day yesterday told others that he was heading home to quarantine. It ends up that voter came in contact with someone with the flu, not the coronavirus. Custodians are disinfecting those buildings today, and while the elementary school was not affected, the superintendent says any students who did not go to class today will get an excused absence. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Massachusetts colleges, universities move to remote learning and COVID-19 concerns. Throughout Massachusetts, many colleges and universities have announced plans to close campuses or move classes online in hoping of stemming the spread of coronavirus. Remote learning for UMass Dartmouth and UMass Lowell students will begin next week with students returning from spring break. The students will be notified that they should not return to campus except with special permission to retrieve belongings from residence hall. Man found dead after trailer 
fire in Rochester. Residents say victim was homeless man who sometimes stayed in trailer. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9, Ray Brewer. Still hasn't hit me fully, to be honest. I don't know yet exactly, but I know it's going to hit hard. This is what remains of the trailer behind Scott Goodwin's house on Jackson Street, where one man died early this morning. A fire that was hot enough to melt the siding on the home. At first, Goodwin didn't know what was going on. Police officers coming. They came and says, get out, there's a fire. And I, don't, I didn't know anything about it because we were all sleeping at that time. Goodwin says there were six people inside the home at the time, including a one-year-old baby. All made it out safely. Goodwin adding that at first, he didn't realize it was the trailer that was on fire. I thought somebody set a fire next to the trailer. I thought it was some, you know, kids playing pranks. As for the victim, Goodwin's wife says he was a homeless man who would occasionally stay in the trailer. A neighbor, woken up by the firefighters, describes the man as friendly and says it's tough to believe he's gone. He was just a really nice guy, though. He, he, We were just talking to him just the other day, joking around with him about having coffee and me bringing coffee to my adult son. And he was like, I wish my mom would bring me coffee. Davidson says she was never worried about the fire spreading because the firefighters seemed to have everything under under control. As for Goodwin, there's one thing he has to do. Gotta get that trail out of here. It's just gonna bring back memories and get rid of it. Gotta get rid of it. That's all we gotta do. While the cause of the fire remains under investigation, the state fire marshal's office did mention that portable space heaters are designed for temporary use and must be plugged directly into a wall outlet, never an extension cord or power strip. Reporting live in Rochester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at that U.S. stock market and see how U.S. stock market closed this Wednesday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you. Get out, Joe Industrial Average closed in the red went down. Your Nasdaq closed in the red went down. S and P 500 closed in the red went down. Gold closed in the red went down. Oil closed in the green and went up. It was ten year closed flat. Your slash USD closed in the red went down, and VIX closed in the green and went up. Dow drops one thousand four hundred points and tumbles into a bear market, down 20% from last month's record close. The coronavirus-induced sell-off reached a new low on Wednesday, as Wall Street gribbled with the rapid spread of the virus, as well as uncertainty around a fiscal response to climb, crumble, slow economic growth resulting from the outbreak. Joe Biden wins in four states. Let's take a listen to that video from WMU from ABC News. Sorry about that, ABC News. Good morning, America. The outbreak also impacting the race for the White House, both Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders canceling events in Cleveland, but it was another big Tuesday for the former vice president, winning at least four of six contests, including the key state of Michigan, and putting Biden in command of the Democratic presidential nomination. Mary Bruce is tracking all the latest for us from Washington. Good morning, Mary. Robin, good morning. Well, this was a massive night for Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders had hoped to blunt Biden's rise, but instead the former vice president dominated the night. And this morning he is now closing in on the nomination. Taking the biggest prize of the night, Joe Biden this morning says he's unstoppable. Tonight, we are a step closer to restoring decency, dignity, and honor to the White House. That's our ultimate goal. Yeah. 
the former vice president celebrating his decisive victory in the key industrial state of Michigan. Biden also winning Missouri, Mississippi, and Idaho. Bernie Sanders picking up just one state, North Dakota. This morning, Washington is still too close to call. The night, a major blow to Sanders. At home in Vermont, he skipped making a public address. With Biden's delegate lead now virtually insurmountable, his supporters, like Congressman Jim Clyburn, say it's game over. I think it is time for us to shut this primary down. It's time for us to cancel the rest of these debates. Biden and Sanders' first one-on-one -on -one debate matchup is still on for this Sunday in Arizona. But it won't just be fewer people on the stage. The DNC is canceling the live audience. Coronavirus this morning is forcing major changes to the campaign trail. Both candidates have already scrapped rallies and say they're now evaluating their plans for future events. Joe Biden is now actively trying to reach out and court Sanders' supporters. And this morning, the silence from the Sanders team is very telling. We have learned that he does plan to address reporters later this morning. And he is looking forward to that debate on Sunday. But at this point, George, that may be more of an opportunity to try and influence policy going forward. Sanders' supporters admit this was a very tough night. George. Okay, Mary, thanks. Let's get more on this now from our chief White House correspondent, John Carlin. John, you just look at the delegate map. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And if you want to watch the rest of the video, we will share the link with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page. And that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday night, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Good night and bye, everyone.